Welcome everyone. Today I'm going to run through some of the areas where AI can potentially benefit your organization. First, just a little about me. My name's Mark Hardman and my background is that I ran my own web CRM company for a couple of decades, um, implementing bespoke solutions for large corporates and SMEs. I've got a strong data background which translated into an interest in AI. So what is AI? There, there are lots of competing definitions, but here's one I like. It's that AI is the capability of a machine to imitate intelligent human behavior. Now, is it true deep intelligence like we humans possess? I don't think so, but what it is, is the ability for a machine to um, do things like a human would do them, and sometimes better. Now, up until a few years ago, AI was the preserve of a select few, but it's now becoming ubiquitous. And this graph shows that the global AI software market is both huge and growing exponentially. And it's kind of dangerous to ignore AI because your competitors are probably looking into it. The head of Microsoft describes AI as the defining technology of our times and Microsoft have a staggering 8,000 people working in their artificial intelligence and research group. Now, this slide might be useful when thinking about, you know, your organizational landscape and where AI can have an impact because there are different areas. Um, so AI can actually be part of your core product or service. It can help orchestrate your customer interactions, for example, using chatbots. Uh, and it can also enhance and automate your business processes. So AI, from my perspective, is kind of divided into two main areas. One is um, what I'm going to call virtual assistants and applied AI, which are point solutions for AI. And the second area is the kind of um, kind of intellectually deeper machine learning space, which we'll talk about near the end. So just looking at virtual assistants and applied AI, we have um, virtual assistants, also known as chatbots, and also applied AI, which Microsoft call cognitive services. So the hierarchy you see at the uh, on the lower part of this slide uh, is basically subdividing all of those different services up into categories such as vision, you know, language, speech, etc. Key thing about all of these is they're consumable and connectable from the cloud. Um, so they can uh, link to, you know, actually your existing systems or things like dynamics and that kind of thing. So just to talk about the virtual assistants or chatbots first, you may well have come across these and I've noticed that there are um, sometimes some kind of emotional reactions to these things. The truth is that there is a really big scale of whether these things are being implemented well or badly. So a badly implemented chatbot, and I'm sure we've all seen uh, some examples, really do not help the user to achieve their goal. They're actually perceived as being a waste of time and, and actually just another way of delaying the person, you know, the customer speaking to a real person. The reason is they just implemented it almost as a gimmick and they don't link to any other backend systems and just don't provide any value to the customer. A well implemented um, virtual assistant is quite different because it is well thought through. It's preloaded with useful, you know, kind of frequently asked questions. It's trained um, on a continuous basis so that the experience of customers interacting with it can be something which can be learned from and making it better incrementally. And also quite pivotally is that in certain circumstances, it can really benefit from linking to back-end systems. So this can allow a customer to basically self-serve. You know, if somebody's um, using a chatbot to pursue the status of their order, then that really is helping them to achieve their goal. And a well-implemented virtual assistant can have a massive impact uh, in terms of cost savings. Um, so I know of one um, particular situation where um, kind of inbound call handling costs were reduced by 80% because customers actually preferred to use their virtual assistant because it helped them to reach their goal. And let's face it, none of us really like hanging on the phone. That's just kind of friction in terms of process. Um, thinking about 
the virtual assistant, let's just be aware that that can be part of, of a blended approach. So you can have a virtual assistant, which is, um, you know, obviously trying to fulfill the mission of the customer, but at any point it can hand off to another communication channel, you know, driven by a real person, you know, phone, email or live chat. Okay, so now let's look at the point solutions, also known as the cognitive services. And the first we're going to look at is vision. Now this is divided up into solutions which encompass images, information on forms, handwriting and video. Uh, and I won't actually dwell on this slide because we're going to look at those in a bit more detail now. So firstly, the image related stuff. On the top left, um, we see depicted where um, image based functionality is able to recognize and identify specific objects. So you can basically feed it any image and it will tell you the things in that image. One use of this is to detect objects on a production line and see if they're faulty and auto reject them. In the top right, we can see a specific area of object recognition, which is facial recognition, where it can detect the presence of a face and its depicted emotion and also identify specific individuals. Now, this can be controversial, but it also has more you know, ordinary applications such as the ability to automate a check-in for a known colleague, for example. Bottom left, it's possible to identify how long a customer spends looking at a particular item, whether they're wearing a mask and how they route themselves past fellow shoppers, which can lead to a ability to optimize store layouts for a better customer experience. And bottom right, whilst on the subject of vision, I'm just going to highlight a thing called HoloLens, which allows collaborative working between someone on site and someone back at HQ. Uh, and they can both share what each other are seeing via holograms. So a little bit more on the HoloLens. This can be used to support what are called um, be there when you aren't there type applications. And it's also finding a lot of uses in training staff who can be taught things like uh, engine assembly, for example, directly through the device. Now, the next vision aspect is a thing called forms recognizer, which allows the layout and content of forms to be learnt by the AI. One project we're currently working on is for a company who have a large number of supplier invoices to process. The system learns the format of any given invoice, just like a human would learn it and can then automatically extract the data and put it into their accounting system. Uh, and this saves a huge amount of manual rekeying. If any of you have heard of OCR, which is optical character recognition, this is way better. Uh, we have a thing called Ink Recognizer, which is Microsoft's name for handwriting recognition, which can help to get information from a handwritten form straight into a destination system with ease. And Finally, there's a service called Video Indexing, which provides functionality similar to what we've already seen, uh, but does it across the time dimension as well. One interesting application for this I encountered was in a market research setting, and uh, this allowed a brand to automatically recognize emotional responses from customers using their products so that they could categorize the various responses. The next set of cognitive services we'll look to cover is language. The top two, uh, Q&A and language understanding, are often used in virtual assistants. Q&A is all about intelligent question and answer handling, whereas language understanding is a more sophisticated service which revolves around understanding someone's intent and meaning. I've got more detailed info on that and also on text analytics shortly. Um, so I'll cover the last two now. Immersive Reader is a service which helps people with learning challenges such as dyslexia to conquer reading. And Translator is all about providing professional level foreign language translation in real time. So let's now look at how we used the language understanding service to help one of our clients. Age UK in Islington is all about providing support interventions based on their client's real situation. Age UK have learnt over the years that rather than a detailed questionnaire, a much better way of learning their client's reality is to ask them very open-ended questions such as, how's it going? 
The interventions that Age UK can provide are categorised into various areas and this slide gives an insight into that variety. The challenge is interpreting the often long answers to open-ended questions and deducing the right interventions to offer. We've implemented an AI solution for Age UK which allows them to capture the free text answers from their clients and the solution splits all of this into sentences and passes each sentence to the language understanding service which returns insights specifically aligned with Age UK's intervention categories. This example shows how the solution can take authentic, informal responses from the client and automatically suggest potential interventions. I'm sure you can imagine the real answers which are given by clients are often very large, so the ability to automatically process them is a great aid to making the right professional decisions quickly. Finally, within language, let's look at text analytics. This service can take text input, typically from emails, Twitter feeds, or virtual assistant conversations, and it automatically detects keywords and customer sentiment. So for example, this can route the feedback from a frustrated customer to the right place and ensure complex inquiries go to the correct team. The next AI service we'll look at is speech. This is all about converting speech to text and vice versa. This technology has advanced massively over the last couple of years and it's now possible for audio to be transcribed into text in real time and the speech to text service can be trained to recognize particular jargon and dialects and you know cope with background noise etc. For text to speech it's now possible to create realistic sounding voices from text input. Let's have a quick look at a male and female version of that. Hi there, I'm a brand voice created for this artificial intelligent webinar. Thanks for your continued attention. Hi there, I'm a brand voice created for this artificial intelligence webinar. Thanks for your continued attention. Okay, so the final cognitive service area we'll look at is what Microsoft calls decision. There are three services within this area and I've got a slide on each. The first is called Anomaly Detector. This is able to look at any data which can be expressed numerically and detect where things diverge from the norm. It can be used to track any KPI and is used in applications such as fraud detection, website behavior tracking and preventative maintenance for example where a vibration sensor on a machine shows a higher level than normal on startup you can diagnose and fix the problem early rather than waiting for a catastrophic failure the next service is content moderator which detects unwanted content such as profanity and adult images if you have any areas where customers share reviews or other content this could ensure that there is no embarrassment for you. Finally, the personalizer service allows your web content to be delivered dynamically based on an evolving knowledge and preferences of the particular customer and also their context, such as you know, the time of day, and weather, etc. Now this service tracks how engaged or otherwise the customer is and alters its delivery over time to maximize engagement. Okay, thanks for sticking with me. And we're on to our final topic, which is machine learning, also known as data science. Now, the first thing I would need to say is that with machine learning, you need to have data science expertise available, either internally or externally from someone like myself. I want to make the distinction between data analytics and machine learning. Analytics is all about gaining meaningful insights from existing data, whereas machine learning is about trying to forecast the future from past patterns. As well as predicting high level factors, machine learning can predict behavior by categorizing people based on aspects of their data. I'm going to illustrate this by example. Imagine that we're a business who makes the distinction between what we call normal customers and premium customers. 
who are those that spend five times as much as a normal customer. The challenge is to work out which early stage customers will become premium customers. I'm going to illustrate the machine learning technique to do this, but be aware this technique can apply to just about any predictive challenge, not just this customer category example. Using machine learning, we can set up what's called a model using different algorithms, and we can alter the parameters or settings of the model. To bust some jargon, think of an algorithm as a predefined, usually mathematical technique. Think of the model as a learning brain. Imagine we have a large amount of pre-existing data about existing customers, including their category value. We split that data into slices of 80% and 20%, and we feed in the 80% to train the model. This includes all of the data such as ACORN group, age band, etc., which is shown on the bottom right, and the customer category, i.e. normal or premium customer. The model will then have its first attempt at finding what are called predictors. A predictor is something which has a high correlation to determining the customer's category. So in its first pass, the model finds that age band and whether somebody attended an event are very influential in predicting the customer category. OK, now let's test the model or brain. What we do is take the other 20% slice of pre-existing data and we throw that into the model, but we hide the customer category values. We ask the model to predict this for itself and it uses the predictors to work out the category. So it makes its prediction for all of the customer records in the 20% slice, and we compare that prediction to what we know. We then determine that the model is 68% accurate. That's not bad, but let's see if we can improve it. The data scientist will then alter the parameters or settings and might even choose a subtly different algorithm. They do this based on various things which they can see from the model's behavior during the test. We then retrain the model by throwing in the 80% of data again, including the customer category. But remember, this time the model has been finessed by the data scientist, so it's an improved model. On this second attempt, the improved model has a clearer view of the predictors and it determines that there is an additional predictor whether the customer responds to add-on offers. We repeat the test phase by throwing the 20% slice of data at the improved model, and it uses its more solid set of predictors to predict the customer category. This time it's 90%, much better. So from this point on, for every additional early stage customer, we can now predict fairly accurately whether they will become premium customers and we can tailor our engagement strategy accordingly, ensure we put in more retention effort and devote more resources to managing the relationship. Well done, guys, we made it to the end. Let's have a brief recap of some key points. So firstly, AI is here and happening. Is it on your agenda? If not, can you put it there? We looked at virtual assistants. Imagine how this technology could liberate your customers to self-serve their own inquiries. We looked at the various cognitive services areas. Could you improve any of your business processes with any of these capabilities or even introduce them as part of your product or service? And machine learning. Could you uncover hidden predictive insights from your pre-existing data? And finally, as a recommended next step, Preact can work with you by undertaking an AI opportunity assessment where we'll explore your business processes with you and identify where AI can have the most beneficial impact. The outcome will be a targeted list of AI actions based soundly on benefit. Please get in touch to find out more and take the next step. Many thanks for watching. If you found this useful, please give this video a like and hit the subscribe button to get information on AI dynamics and the power platform.